Hello, it's me, Neil Brennan. It's the Blocks Podcast. I'm in a different studio. I'm in Austin, Texas at the Comedy Frequency yeah. Podcast Studio. Not bad. And uh, my guest today is a, is a Austin, Texas legend. <laughs> He's got a new Netflix special uh, that I'm blanking on the name of. Uh, live from the Mothership. Live from the Mothership. Good dude. Met him at the store probably five years ago. And uh, he had good jokes from the time I saw him. And his name is Brian Simpson. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you, buddy. Likewise, man. You, the first time you met me, you know, you you, uh, you gave me some shoes that were too big for me. They were too big for you? But I paid, they paid my rent. I gave you and Jamar shoes, right? I were they Jordans? They were, but I wasn't with nobody else. Were they red Jordans? No. I gave Jamar some red. Oh, yeah. He probably still got Red, red Jordans that he sold, I think, for $750. Uh, $750? <laughs> What'd you get? No, I got $450. That's no, not bad. Yeah. Because I'm not a hype beast at all. I've never... I've never owned a pair of Jordans before I shot my special. That's smart. That's what I like about this. Is what I like about Simpson is uh, you have your working class. You're not silly. You tell no, people your background. No, that's because I don't even know it. All right, t- all right, dis- disabuse me. I was born in in Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. and when I was like seven, um, went into foster care. How did you go into foster care? So the parent, your parents couldn't do it. My dad already wasn't around. My 18 year old mother lived with her mother. Mm -hmm. She already had me and my older brother. So she, she had her first kid at 16, me at 18. Loved it so much. Was like, I gotta give it, I gotta do another one. Something. (laughs) No, no, no. Because I think she really, she really thought my father was going to, was so that set, both of you guys were from the same guy? No, 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 no. My brother, my older brother was from a different guy, who was just a shithead high school boyfriend type yeah. dude. But my dad was like a real dude. Where it was like my mother was like, oh, we can build together, like we right. if we stick together. But you know, my, my dad ended up cheating on her. And anyway, my grandma, who my who my mother, my mother's mother, she she always dated all these abusive men. You know, and then they would never abuse the kids. And it's funny how that how that kind of works that way sometimes. But they would never abuse the kids, but they would always, she would always beat the fuck out of my, he would always beat the fuck out of my grandma. And, and, and my, my mother had already fucking hurt two of the dudes. The last dude. Defending she, her mother. Right. Who would then turn on her. Well, that's funny because when you say they don't hit the kids, a lot of times they do hit the kids. Oh, yeah, sometimes they do. But 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 that's what's so, what's so funny is my grandmother was a crazy bitch. And touching one of the kids, would, that's, that would have set her off. Right. They could beat the fuck out of her and she would cry, wipe her face off and make them a sandwich. But if they went at one of her children, she would literally like pour hot lye on their face. Like she's lost her shit before. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've seen her. Well, they probably sensed that. Oh, yeah, yeah, straight mama bear type shit. But yeah. my mother, the last dude, my mother burned the guy with an iron. It was this whole thing. and then my, Burnt one of your grandmother's men right? with an iron. Yeah, and then the guy. And your mom's eight, 17, 18. No, I mean, I think, 20 I think at, this, at that point, I think she was 16. So she didn't, hadn't had me yet, but she was just over it. And then she found out that my grandma went, was back with the guy. She came over, the guy was in the house, and she was like, I'm not doing this shit no more. And, and she left. And uh, it, the, when she first, see, when, every time I, t- I go through this whole spiel, yeah, yeah. I skip over a lot of the, the, the parts because it's just faster to say she left. But for real, she took us with her, but couldn't hack it. At, you know, she was a teenager, you know what I mean? Yeah. We had to have her own place and two kids and all yeah. of those. So she. Two kids under three. Right. So she, yeah. took, she took us back. She left us there. And then one of our hating ass neighbors called the cops and said we was home alone. And then back then, they used to have this propaganda shit, and this was like the Nancy Reagan dare days. So cops was all in the schools. I don't know why they don't do that shit no more, do, or do they not? But the cops used to come to the schools, to the school to be like friendly. Cause like, but, but, I think they probably still do that. I don't think so. I don't think the kids have no respect for cops at all now. Like, I don't think I don't think it would help. No, no, but but what I mean is no now the they, community outreach is what now, you're talking now about. Now they they have no no because oh, now, I guess cops are in the school. Yeah, now they have cops in the schools to to police. You were born in what eighty three, eighty two, eighty two. But now the cops are in the schools as police. 
like but to police the kids right right yeah. but back yeah, then yeah, yeah. they used to like, come and just be like because and this was the thing every single one of them said i'm officer friendly yeah they all said their name was officer friendly yeah. and they were just there so that you felt comfortable around police yeah. so there was they weren't there tr looking for crimes they were there just being like yeah friendly if you need to snitch no no it wasn't you even, can come to it me it wasn't even like that it was like oh i'm gonna be helpful i'm gonna help yeah. you up i got you with your book you know don't don't be a bully it was all it was that yeah, kind yeah. of shit so anyway the nosy ass neighbor called the cops and said we home alone which every every black kid in the hood was home alone if you had a single working parent yeah but and my dumb ass answered the door because every black child is also told don't answer the fucking door <laughs> but he was like it's officer friendly you know i'm like I fuck with this guy. Right, that's officer <laughs> friendly. I know officer friendly. And it wasn't officer friendly, not the one I knew. Was he in uniform? Yeah, he was in uniform. But there was a cop at my school that we call officer friendly. I didn't know back then all of them just said their name was officer yeah. friendly. But whatever. So they took us, and, and even then, I, we had to, we down at the, at the jail for a while. They took you in? They took us down to the jail. For for what? What were the charges? No, they didn't charge us with nothing. All right. They just were holding us down, and they, and they wanted my grandmother to come get us or whatever. But it's like everyone knows the situation. Like Technically, it's illegal to leave your kids home alone. Right. But it's like, but ain't no cop. You know what I mean? Yeah, like everyone's kind of doing some form of this. Right. So was, Were you guys super young? I couldn't have been older than so you were six. seven and five was, or yeah yeah so but but even then my grandma she walks in that fucking police station like she owned that motherfucker I mean scream sc like they threatened to lock her up you know what I mean like man yeah. if you don't calm down we like I've never seen anybody where they like we don't want to arrest you like please you as a kid don't you doesn't that read as uh, care. If your grandma, I was, it's like those dads who try to lunge at the child molester in court or the murderer in court. If I'm, if that's my dad, I'm like, I'm proud of him or I would feel cared for per, I, or that's what I think I would feel. I, I don't know what I felt back then. Maybe embarrassed at that age or confused or something. Or like, is yeah, she a cop? Know. Is she more important than the cops? I don't know. But, 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 but also like I have way, I have way more respect for the dad that plans it and fucking like the guy that blew that guy's head off when they was walking him through the airport. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I have more yeah, respect for that, that guy than the guy that just like loses emotional control in the moment. Yes, I can say why the guy who loses control is better because if let's say it's a molestation, if he just loses control in the courtroom and lunges at the, at the uh, perpetrator. He's gonna get away with it. It's understandable. If he plans it and kills him he's going to jail the dad's going to jail forever leaving the son or daughter alive and w kind of without a father now if the kid's dead though respect right to the to the father yeah because that's one of them places where you can't really get true revenge you can't be like i'm gonna wait till you go to the prison and then i'm gonna molest your son <laughs> you know that's, yeah but whatever so anyway we we i don't know if i, I don't know what how i looked at her in, in the moment I guess you know what it is. I don't know. I guess I just looked at the at those cops like, like yeah, like that's how she be. Like I, you're reacting the way I do. Yeah, like we don't know what to do. Me, so yeah, that's yeah. You should listen to her. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. so she gets you out, and then and then that somehow leads because I've never talked to either person about it, my grandmother or my aunt. That leads to us moving upstairs in the same building with our aunt who also has two kids. So she was also a teenage mom. Auntie has us, can't handle it, obviously. Call social services. Yep. Just so happens my brother's grandmother, so his dad's mom, is a foster parent mm. in Maryland, which is right across the border. Yeah. So then they put us with them because they will, they will put you with family if they can. If they can. Yeah. It was a, it was a nice home as far as foster homes go. Um, not the nicest one I was ever in, but definitely... That is where I felt abandoned. All right. Well, you know that's what, I mean? what, what I was going to ask you. In that particular home. Yeah. That and home. you feel like you felt abandoned because you should have been more emotionally connected and it wasn't there? No. No, no, no. I felt abandoned because the the aunt we were living with, because this, this, this was, so before, before we lived there, this was just, because we thought she was rich. She just lived in the suburbs. She was just the grandma that we would go visit every now and then because yeah. she had the she had the nicest house in the family and you know they had the Nintendos and shit like that. So it was a big holiday at Thanksgiving or something like that. We might go over there, slide, 
you know, but she had cable, which was Fuck. mind blowing. Fuck. Cable in multiple rooms. Fuck. Right. All this. So I was told that we were going over there for Christmas. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. Okay, whatever. I don't like her like that, but to be at that cable. nice ass house for a few days. Ooh, How's that cable? Yeah. Cable still warm? Exactly. So then a few days go by and we're there. And obviously, and I get into it with one of the kids. One of the kids is one of her biological kids, and I, f- I fucking hated her. And I get into it with her, and I'm like, whatever, bitch, I'm going home. I can't wait to go home. And she started cackling. <laughs> I was like, well, and you knew, like, oh, she knows something I don't know. No, I was completely confused. You know, and she was like, you live here, nigga. I was like, what are you talking about? Oh, what the fuck out of here? I go to her, I go to the mother of the house. Hey, when are we going home? It's like, you are home. What the fuck? So I go, I run and grab my brother. And I'm like, yo, did you know we live here? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Auntie told me like two months ago. I'm like, so why you ain't tell me? So this is in February this happened? Or you, this is before Christmas. You, He found out like in November you were going. Right. He, he, gotta, gotta, he gotta, found gotta. out November that we was going. Yeah. You know, and, 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 I, and, I, and, then, and then I remember like months before that, my cousin, my, my, uh, my aunt's son. Yeah. Him saying that to me that we was going into foster care, saying it like a insult. Yeah. And me not believe him because he would do shit like that. Yeah. You know, so not thinking nothing about it. And now I'm thinking, oh, so so everybody knew except me. Yeah. Like, why the fuck did why did everyone feel that it would be better to just to lie to me? Right. That, like, what did you think was gonna happen? That I was gonna get over here and have such a great time I would never want to go home. And then and then I would find out we were staying here and be like, yay, is that what you was hoping for? Uh-huh. Yeah, fuck that. I was so, honestly, I think that sparked, there's a little ember of pissed off that's always smoldering in me from that moment. Yeah. Where it's like, I don't trust, it, 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 and, then, and, then, and then everything after that eroded my, my trust in the adults around me. Yeah, I think that's real dangerous for, for for kids. I I would never do that to my kids. Well, that's what I was. The the question I wanted to ask was: so you grew up in foster care until age of eighteen? Yeah, and then you went to the military. No, so the military. if you grow up what you think is in a normal, healthy way, relatively right? Like let's say hypothetically, you grew up in like just a stable one or two parent home with no major volatility, right? Right. Who do you think you'd be versus who do you think you are? It's a hard question to answer, but I'm saying like, what did you get? What do you think being sort of in foster care did to your spirit? Looking back on it, I think I, if I had been, if I had grown up normal, I think I was, I would just be great at something else. Than comedy? Right. Or, or I might still be doing comedy. I, I might just have a completely just be di- worse at it. different perspective. <laughs> I don't think I'd be worse yeah. at it. I, I just think I would, maybe, maybe. I don't I, think you, you have a good brain. So it's yeah. like your, 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 I think I just have your a jokes are like a pinball mach- are like synaptic pinballs. Right. Exactly. So it's not like, uh, like you come up with weird angles. So it's not, it's not based on trauma necessarily or for lack of a better word. Right. But, like but, it's may- based- but maybe it did. But it probably, it, doesn't hurt. I think where it helped me was my ability to translate, my ability to chameleon and, and understand. Communicate the, between the kids and the foster parents, so to what, speak. You know what it gave me? It gave me the, it gave me the ability to to instantly become the observer. Like when I catch myself. Yeah. You know, because there's being in the moment and then there's being above the moment, yeah. which is a different thing. And it gave me that ability to be like, wait a minute, let me let me observe like what's making this what's making because you had you had to learn that beha- you know you change a home, you change in schools, you change in friends, you have to learn how to fit in, you have to learn how to recognize danger, you have to right. learn how to 
assess people's motivations and what yeah, they- you have to read every single room right and and that you're never there's no home games yeah so there's there are things about the foster care experience that have stuck with me to this day and i don't think they'll ever go away yeah but and on top of that by the way netflix let me make my documentary please every foster adult that i have met has most of the same issues is it largely because your first block is basically what we what we're talking about which is i don't fit in completely anywhere right so obviously that's there there it is and and do you know and you're the first person that i've ever you're the first person that's a friend of mine that i've said those words to that didn't take it it's absurd uh what what do they say like seven people love you and right. da, 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 da. right or yeah, really yeah. yeah like you or because I guess you can't tell someone that you don't fit in without it being a statement about them. Right. It's like, I understand. We all right. are crazy about it. It's like, no, I hear you go, your joke about, I don't wish shortness on somebody. I wish endless height growth. <laughs> and when I see one of you tall fucks <laughs> dancing the night away, I don't wish you were my height. <laughs> I wish you would keep growing. Yeah, uncontrollably, nonstop. <laughs> Till you reach a height where it's not sexy to nobody. Oh, right. On somebody, I go, well, there's a, all right, he's not going to care about New Year's Eve. He's not exactly. going to care about birthdays. He's right. not, you're not going to care about the normal shit that you're supposed to care about because you don't, I, and I say it because I'm in the same position. I don't care about the shit other people care about. And I don't see things the way other people care about and, it. And can I just say this too, to the women in your, of your listeners? Uh -huh. Hey, listen, when your man tells you he doesn't care about birthdays, he means it. Mm -hmm. But the reason you think he doesn't is because that's not what you would mean if you said it. Correct. He and, doesn't mean I don't care about your birthday. Right. He means I don't care about my birthday. He d And he means I don't think that birthdays are a significant milestone for anything. Right. And I don't want a party. Yep. And when you throw me a party and it's all said and done and you go, well, I th he really wanted one because I threw him a party. Yeah. And he had a great time. No. What you did was you put me in a position where I well, had, had to, to have a, pretend he had like to I was perform having, great time. Right. Because I can't walk into my surprise party and go, what the fuck is this? Because yeah. then I'm the piece of shit. So yes. now I have to go, oh, babe. This is <laughs> I hate every second of it. Just And I feel, un I feel unheard. Me too. I hate every second of it also. Right. I feel unseen when you, I, I asked you not to do that. Yes. Yes. No, but you're being, you're fishing. No, I'm, no not. I'm not. I know how to get attention. <laughs> right. I like to earn it with a thought. Right. Go on a stage, have people approve or disapprove. Because I, honestly, I think what bothers me the most about all the, I'm not a fan of pageantry. That's, but it all, it all boils down to that. I'm not a fan of, 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 of doing things for show. How about parades? You must love parades. I fucking hate parades. <laughs> I hate I hate doing things that just for show. Yeah, it's like I don't like ceremonies. I don't mm -mm. like like I, like I recognize the the, the 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 tradition and all that, but it's like wrap it up, wrap it up. Yeah, why your wed? Like that's why I don't go to Catholic weddings. Why your wedding? Why out of vow? Why is the, why have we been sitting in the church? Why is this over an hour? For two and a half. Why hours? is it over right. twenty minutes? And then my next question is, why am I still here? Why is the mass longer yeah. than the, the reception? And why are we pretending like this is going to help? <laughs> How is this helping right. anything? Like, you know what I mean? Like, by the power of our wedding day, please get us through this argument. You either fuck with each other or you don't. I know. Wedding and we're unromantic for saying this. Weddings is a weird wedding is a, a wedding is a weird thing to me because it feels like it feels like a giant fucking upfront investment in something that fails so regularly. It's 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 like it's almost like you wouldn't buy you when you buy a car you do more research you're more cautious it's like having a grand opening for a building that cannot pass inspection <laughs> cut the ribbon yeah. it can't pass inspection guys don't have a ceremony unless you're it's it just you just get married and shut the fuck up yeah you know what it is it's almost you know this to me i feel like some some people's like getting married is like <clears throat> 
it's like it's like renting an apartment online without ever going there. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, you know, and, and then you. And but then, by the way, making everyone go to the apartment. Yeah. And when you, you move in, and then you show up, and you're like, "This hmm. is fucking great, yeah." And then as soon as the party's over, and the lights off, and you start cleaning up, and you start noticing stuff. Huh. Oh wait a minute, I didn't see this crack in the wall. Right? Huh. I it's a ceiling slump. I ain't seen this. Like, yeah, and you like it cold. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, so whatever. Yes. So you're you are. I'd say constitutionally abnormal, right. and then I probably out of the out of the box from eighty three on, and then eighty four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen didn't help. Right. It yeah. exacerbated a exactly. pre existing condition. And you know how? And you know how I know that I would have been very similar to who I am now is because this is one of the things I really kind of do get emotional about because my mom. You know, because people people hear my story and just assume that we aren't close. But when I finally got to perform in D.C., shout out to D.C. Improv, and my mom to come see me perform. Also, her first time. No, no, that's not true. But but her second time seeing me perform live. But her, a lot of her friends who've never met me come in to see me perform for the first time and constantly saying to her. Well, that's your fucking son for sure, because she she and I are so much. We have the same constitution. We're just, yeah, we're very resilient. There's also weird shit like your throat, the way you, I don't know your mom, but I'm saying like the way you say certain things or the way you pronounce words or the way just shit that is that creepy family shit. See, my uh, <laughs> the, I got so many friends that would have been like that would have been like, well, I mean, I know your mom's throat. They would have just made it, took yeah. a jab at my of course, mom. Of course. Whatever. I was I thought I was yeah. whatever. That, it's, it's very She's Neil Brennan goat. to be like yeah, yeah, yeah. that joke is beneath me. <laughs> even though I even though I know it popped up in your head. Of course. <laughs> but it's like shoot, of course. Shoot. I wouldn't waste people's time like that. <laughs> All right. So um yeah, uh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like everything, so many things about her and me are the same. So I know a lot of my, you know, your ingredients don't change. Yeah, which you know, your pantry is—it's got in it what it's what's in it. You're, yeah. it's, to me, I think still a pound cake, even if it's sitting in a refrigerator or a or a dusty cabinet. No, but I, I, no, I mean like your, I think like right, when you're born, your fucking your personality is a dusty doomsday bunker, you know, and everything that's in it is what you got, and you can flip it and make different shit with all the ingredients yeah. in there, but you can't add shit in it that ain't in there, you know, mm-hmm. and so. You can put one of those video game chairs in there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. You do. You can spruce it up a bit. Yeah, yeah spruce it up, clean it up. But yeah, it's still gonna be but, what it's gonna yeah, be. Yeah, but I think I think everybody's born with a kitchen, and you can and you what you can make the possibilities are countless. But there's certain stuff you just can't make because you don't got it. You know. Okay, so I know you're alone. Are you lonely? Is it strange to say that I I never I'm never quite sure. No, I'm positive that I. I don't feel lonely often. I do recognize when I need to be around people, and maybe that's loneliness. It's you know you know what it is loneliness. I think it's just like it's the difference between I'm starving or I should eat. I should probably eat. Right. My relationship with alone is different because alone brings me comfort. Like if I'm I'm at peace when I'm alone. If that's, you're used to it, yeah. Well, yeah, and it's it's almost like have you ever have you known any wrestlers? Mm-mm. People that wrestled in school or whatever. Oh no, not or, or, not, or, that I, not or popping in my fighters. Head. Anyone had to cut weight. No, no, but like okay, but the people that people that grew up wrestling and stuff like that, when they they cut weight so much at such an early age, that like my friend Jeffrey's like this. He, his his relationship with hunger is like it's it's twisted because he never feels like he's starving. Yeah, he's, he's star. He's he knows what starving is. Right. He just recognizes the patterns of how yeah. he behaves when he hasn't eaten. Like he, if he knocks over the thing, he's like, "Oh shit!" I yeah, eat. I got it. Yeah. But he doesn't feel hungry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, okay. Well, that was uh, what I was going to say. So there is that like constitutional observer removed thing, which people probably take as aloof. Which I've always been like, I'm not aloof. Like I'm. Engaged. Aloof, aloof I, meaning what? Uh, disinterested, dispassionate. Think think less of people. I've been called that. I'm, that's not me at all. I know. Me neither. You seem. I seem more like it than you do. Um, but 
that's because when you're sort of observing all the time, you're still reading the room, people think like, oh, he thinks he's better than It's like, no, I'm just a little quiet. No, you know what? You know what it is? This is that you have you have an urgent timber and tone to your vo- to your voice. So it sounds like you don't have time for whatever you're like who like whatever I don't. Who, wherever I'm you're kidding. talking right now, it yeah. feels like I don't have time for little things, for chit chat, for right. for in, things that are insignificant. Like your voice sounds like that. Well, I which is fairly true, but it doesn't mean like fuck you. It just right, means exactly. like, hey, well, let's get to the thing. Yeah, you. I don't. You never come off as aloof to me. You come off as the sort of person that's like, that's like, I will give you five seconds to prove to me that this interaction is not completely pointless. <laughs> All right. you, like you won't ever say that, but it's like, what, right. what's going on? I'll give you a chance to say something interesting, and then we might, say, <laughs> we might be here talking for an hour. Or right. I'm mean, like, you well, call good me. to see you. Right. But we've also talked yeah. on the phone for an hour, and, and I, it wasn't like, what? Right. And you know what? I'm exactly the same way, but you I'm, didn't do Chappelle show, but so I, no one right. thinks you're an asshole. And I'm and I'm and I have I'm a, I have a friendlier disposition. Yeah. Correct. Um, which is also not me either. I know. I'm I'm nice. I just don't seem like. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm saying is, what do you, I also consider that my sort of uh, comfort or even desire to be alone sometimes with um, when you grow up around a bunch of people sounds like you're with a lot of people around uh, a lot of people around no space but th- no but that wasn't even really was I'm, I'm gonna tell you what it was Go. in my third or was it my fourth foster home I was playing with a gun and shot my foster brother and that turned into a whole fucking shit storm and i don't know why right and i ended up being taken out of that home what do you can i before can i cut can i butt in real quick yeah what do you i was thinking about a kid playing with a gun how old were you um at this point i'm 15 okay so you know what a gun is i'm just wondering what little kids think is happening no but they're playing with a gun at that point, which is crazy, I'm pretty, sh- I'm almost positive I had never seen a gun, not a real one. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I had seen one, but I definitely had never held a gun. This is going to piss off my uh, lefty friends, but I, I honestly think, you know, guns and sex are things that people need to be educated about as long as it's going to be ubiquitous you know Since what I mean? they're here they're everywhere and yeah you, and and it, we clearly aren't going to do anything about it even though it's weird that both sides focus most of their on abstinence energy. right but the, the right focuses on abstinence and the left focus um, on getting rid of guns even yeah. though neither of those things is ever going to happen yeah. it's like everywhere everywhere throughout history violence and sex is part of us yeah anyway i, I, I don't know what uh, why i went off on that no, yeah, I mean, you're. That's actually not. That's a a good premise and b true, which is the, we should have gun class in yeah. eighth grade. And I end up in I ended up in the military where I where I trained and slept with my gun, and I never shot anybody, not even an accident. That's funny. And I literally the reason I shot my my at the time my best friend was because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I just thought about you sleeping with your gun, so you would I would assume you wake up most mornings with an erection against up against your gun no no i would wake up in a cot with my so it it would be i don't know if you ever seen those military cuts but they kind of bow a little bit like mm-hmm. you in my in the, in the look what i would do is i would put my leg through the sling put my leg through the sling and wrap it around does everybody have their gun yeah so get but somebody must have fucked their gun at a certain point. Um, I don't know if it's possible to fuck your gun. There's no, there's really no. Can you dry hump it? I mean, look, that's definitely possible, but but there's way more fuckable things around you when you're deployed than, than your gun. Boots. Also, you need your gun. Like, you know, the reason you're sleeping with it is because at any moment you might need to use it. Right. So it's not a sex object. I mean, you definitely don't want coming your gun in a fire. <laughs> That's what I was getting at. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So, so you, the gun thing. So you shoot your. I shoot my friend. I guess I can't just skip past that, right? So, yeah. So they. So long. I'm gonna make the short. The story short. Long story short. Another former foster kid that used to live in in this house that I was in. Like he. So he's grown. He's out. He's grown. But he was there when the oldest kid 
that's there with me was a younger kid. So that he kind of looks up to. So he gives him a gun to hold. Like just say, like, hold this for me. Don't talk mm-hmm. about it. So this gun's in the house for, I don't know, months, whatever. And then and he keeps it a secret. And then one day he's, I don't know if he's drunk or high or whatever. And he decides to fuck with me and like wake me up with it to my face. So in the middle of the night, I don't know who's here, who's in the house. He just wakes up, don't you fucking move. You know what I mean? It was like, yeah. and I'm fucking scared. And I'm like, I don't have anybody, whatever the fuck. And then he turns on the lights and he starts laughing, blah, 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 blah. This is the jokes you've been a part of as a child are three of the meanest jokes I've ever heard. I know. It's all foster care and actual <laughs> right. gun it's violence. It's all abandonment and, <laughs> and betrayal. Yeah. And so, you know, to get him back, you know, I waited a few weeks. He was getting ready for a date to get out the shower, blah, blah, blah. He comes in and I'm like, ah. Which now thinking back on it, I'm like, why would, that's not even a good prank because because I was just scared I was going to yeah. die. That's he, a good prank. He, that's not a good he's prank. He's going to be like, but, you're just yeah. holding the gun. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what possessed me to shoot it. Is it one of those things that just happened and you don't remember sending the message to your finger to pull the trigger? No, no, that no, kind no, of no, thing? no, no, no. What, what it was is when he did it to me, he pulled the trigger and it clicked. So he and, and he was like, ah, little bitch, and took took the thing out and showed me and, and right. cocked it back and showed me, blah, blah. blah. And I I just remembered that in the wrong order. So when I got the gun, when he was in the shower and I got the gun, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I took the magazine Slight out. Slight mix up. Yeah. Right. I took the magazine out and I cocked it back. And it, that put one in the chamber. Oh, fuck. Right. And so I, actually, I did it in the, in, the, in the right order, but I just didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. You know? And so, um, so I just, I pulled the trigger. He gets shot. He survives. Where? Shot in the stomach. 22. Oh, fuck. 22 caliber. Glass to me bag, all that. To this day? No, no. I think, actually, I haven't seen him since then, but I'm pretty- oh, I'm, so I'm surprised he doesn't keep, <sighs> keep in touch. No, no, no. I spoke to him about a year and a half ago or something like that, but that was the first time I spoke to him since then. So it's been over 25 years, 30 years. And did he, did you explain like, well, you did it to me, so where was it just like, ah, and then no, it's no, no. It was, insane. So what's funny is- I carried around this guilt because that foster mother was the best one I ever had. They take me out of that home because it's clearly, you know, I lie, I lie for him because they, you know, he tells me what to say, but he's bleeding to death. I called our friend before I called the cops. I called our friend while the neighbors was calling the cops. So when the cop was questioning me, he already knew what I was saying was a lie because he was like, why would you call this guy? Why would you call this guy instead of 911? Right. Yeah. You know, this doesn't make any sense. And, and so then what is that guy going to tell them? You yeah. know, so it was all these things. My, my lie unraveled very quickly. And uh, I got taken out of that home, like from the hospital. The, the, they came to the hospital and got me and took me to my previous home. Back your aunt's house upstairs. No, 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 no. Because the, the, the shooting happened in like my fourth home or third home. Oh, okay. And they took me to the home before that. And I remember just sitting in the dark. Somehow it it brought me comfort. Like everyone had questions and concerns, and all I'm worried about is like, is is he alive? Am I a, did I did, like did I kill him because I'm stupid? Like what was you know? I'm just sitting there at, going through all these things, and all of these adults who I don't trust, right, are trying to cops, foster parents, right? And I'm like, get the fuck out of here with your pamph. You don't have a pamphlet on what to say to a kid that just shot his friend. Stop trying to fucking, you know, like you looked up the answer in your textbook, yeah. like trying to tell me how I feel. I hate and are that. they trying to scan you for like, are you crazy? Are you a murderer? Or is it just like, do they, does anyone quickly go, well, this is just an accident? I, I don't know. I, you know what I think? I think what I needed at that time was an adult conversation. I think it's important to recognize when you, when you have a uh, constitution, what you call it? Constitution. 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 constitutionally different child yeah because uh, I don't, don't want to say smart child because that's can mean a lot of things different things right but i was a smart kid and i think the smarter your child is the more they need things to make sense because a lot of a lot of adults have child conversations with their children because it makes them comfortable yeah they don't there's want- also the thing when you're a when you're a kid like i'm assuming similar that we were where you'll say shit to adults and they'll be like huh a lot of like, I've never thought of that. And you're like, you've never thought of that? Because oh, I'm yeah. 11. Right. Well, that's a, How did you not think of that? Well, there's and a, it's just like, they just don't. There's a lot of that. I, yeah. Because I think as a kid, I don't think I've, I don't think I was ever around any adult that 
Yeah, and it's not like they're dumb. It's just we're just smart. weird. Yeah, I don't think I was ever around any adult I thought was smarter than me. I, I, there were definitely ones I, I recognized wisdom. I recognized that they knew things I didn't. Yeah, but it's like, oh, you're just keeping the information. But you're you're you didn't. you're a hard drive. You're not a you're not a CPU. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Wow. Dude. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You're a hard drive, not a CPU. And so I didn't. I just didn't trust any of them. I, but I, that's not true. I trusted them to behave the way I had stored them in my mind. Where it's like, you're the type yeah. of person that's going to react this way. And they never surprised me. They always reacted the way I thought. So you're in the dark. So I'm sit- so I so yeah. I so I spent a lot of time because I because I'm also so here's the other thing. I'm also around other foster kids that like I left this home because I didn't get along with these kids. Mm. So, are they glad like you didn't make it, or are they like fuck? No, because the you know everybody because these are traumatized kids. Yeah. Like they I don't know what it is. They but they were she that foster mother was she was doing the the system a favor. Like I wasn't supposed to be there. And probably, you know, if they would ever let me look at my own file, which you can't do that for whatever reason, why do they save the records if you're the only one that's allowed to see it? Like, they save your records. They're confidential. No one's allowed to see them. You can see them later? You can't ever see them. Ever? The state of Maryland will not let me see my foster care records. Ever. Okay. But at the same time, no one is allowed to see them. Mm. So then that begs the question, then why do you have them? No, right. we don't know. In, in you can't. The, we can't tell you that information. Exactly. In case the CIA ever wants to destroy yeah. you. No, but uh, but also it does make sense that they won't let you see them because like you could have some kind of, you know, you could have you could be mentally unstable. You could have you know you could read something that one of your foster mothers said about you that you didn't know or you know because yeah all, I don't know if you're over eighteen it seems like you should be able to know you sh- you should be able to know I agree, um, but I'm sure they have all kind of bullshit reasons. But <clears throat> anyway. So they had to, so she was she's keeping holding me there for them to find somewhere for me to go cuz now I'm a problem child for sure and she ain't a problem child person and so they're keeping me separate from the other kids in this house yeah yeah it was a big ass house okay i basically they kept me i was just downstairs where the i was in the giant living room i guess got it and all the bedrooms are upstairs so for the for the few days i was there I had that whole room. I was just me in that room. And I remember my foster mother walking in and turning on the light and her asking me, like, do, you know, do I need anything? Do I want to talk? And I was like, can you just turn the light off? And I don't know why sitting in the dark made me feel better. I think it was like less sensory input or something. Like, but something about it made me feel like I had more control of the situation that felt so much out of my control. And I ain't want to fucking talk to her or them or whatever, you know. It's also, I think, being isolated, what it's like a sign of depression and all that stuff, but it's also, I think there's something empowering about isolation, especially if you're, I'm sensitive to perception. Like, I, like, feeling someone's perception makes me behave differently. Mm. And... It's a friend of mine, Monica Martin, always says, I don't always want to be perceived. So it's like, I just like being by myself. I don't have to think about how I am. I don't have to think about what my behavior makes you think I think of you. I just want to behave and exist and not worry about who's going to see it and who's going to uh, uh, analyze it and appraise it and assume things about it. And I think I think I do my best. I, I, I think I do my best thinking by myself. Absolutely. Because I, cause I'm also one of those people that like, I actually enjoy thinking. I enjoy, yeah. I enjoy actively picking an idea apart yeah. and th- really thinking about it's it. It's its own reward. Yeah. It's like, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I wonder. Ah, oh. right. And you're not. You're, it's not that. That's not your voiceover. But you're like, it is when you have like a good brain. You can kind of like, mm, mm, it's, yeah. it's it's fun. It's it like something you're satisfying you're just about sitting it. around doing nothing. I'm like, yeah. so is Neil deGrasse Tyson. He gets paid to think. What do you think the head of the planetarium is doing? Yeah. You think he's he, he's not. He's never looked through that telescope. Yeah, he's just thinking of formulations. Think, what think, like, what do you think of theoretical? Uh, so now theoretical I, physicist. I, I know. And, I know. Daniel Grass is not a theoretical physicist. But like, what do you think Michio Kaku does? He makes all this decent money. He's he, he gets paid to think. Yeah. Of of things that can't be proven. Mm-hmm. So yeah. why where I'm, do you think he's going to do it in a in a in a square <laughs> ass office? Right. Why, so why I'm, why why is it that when I'm sitting around turn thinking, the fucking lights off? Right. I'm just fine, when I'm sitting around thinking it's not nothing. Yeah. Have you beat yourself up about not feeling connected to people? Because a lot of these, all of your blocks are basically um, 
related to this, you know, like they're related to it's, I don't fit in completely. I, I may never have a healthy relationship, brain noise. And then I don't know if I, I've, if I'll ever be on the right medication. What's the, what are you medicating for? I don't know, man. I honestly don't know. What do they diagnose? They diagnose depression? So when I was the foster care doctors diagnosed me with ADHD. Okay. But I, I didn't trust them. So so every chance I could, I didn't listen and I didn't accept it. And in fact, I never even thought about it again until cocaine didn't work. And then I realized, and it kept not working. You know, so, I, so I've tried cocaine. Hundreds of times. Yeah, thousands. No, <laughs> no, no, because every everyone that's really into cocaine, when you when I tell them that I, that I, I when I say I don't do coke, I should have just said that. But I would say, oh, it doesn't do anything to me. And that just tells them to go, oh, well, you ain't more. You yeah, haven't had no, this shit. Got I got going on. So I've had three or four chances to try it. And every single person is like, no, this, this shit is the shit. And it doesn't do anything. Like yeah. it's, and I found out later on that it's because uh, if you were on Ritalin as a child. Which, I didn't know this until Alex Edelman does a joke about it in his new HBO special. I and I watched it last night. It's if you, I didn't know you if you took Ritalin, Coke stops working. Yeah, it's insane. What do they have you on? Ritalin still? No, or they had you on Ritalin then? They had me on Ritalin then. Was that the right medication then? I don't know, man. Because I, like I said, every chance I got, I didn't take it. In fact, oh, you didn't take it. The first, no, I took it, but the the first the first two weeks that they put me on it. We we go have a, a parent teacher conference. It's my so it's my foster mother, my teacher, and the guidance counselor, and they're all sitting around talking about how they notice a huge change in my behavior and how blah blah blah. blah. And I know that I've been spitting out the pills. So and they're all sitting around. Agreeing, oh, that's funny. They're all sitting around congratulating each other, agreeing <laughs> with each other. And I'm like, oh, these people are full of shit. Each and every fucking one of them. And then the next time I got caught spitting out the pill, and so she she devised all these different ways to make us take them or whatever. That's the other thing because I would I would always be the because she's got a bunch of kids that's on a bunch of meds, and I and so she would make us all drink out of one cup. So she would have one giant cup of juice or water or whatever, and then everyone's medications lined up. You, and then that's one thing me with me and my mama are like. It's like I don't be drinking behind fuck people, you know. And but you in somebody else's house, so I always make sure I'm the first one in line. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I got caught. That's how I got caught cheeking it. You know. Anyway, the point is, I, I notice they're all full of shit. Man, what was my point? I guess it's the being on the right medication. Oh, being on the right medication. What are you supposed to be? What are so, they what are so, they still treating you for? So I was on Riddle and then. Fast forward all the way through the comedy world or what what have you, I end up in a homeless shelter in Los Angeles, in a veterans homeless shelter. What year? This is twenty fifteen. Are you doing comedy at this point? At this point I'm five years into comedy, I think. Yeah. I just left San Diego and moved to LA. I was homeless within weeks. Congratulations. Yeah, I end up in this shelter, but and at this particular shelter, it's specifically for veterans, specifically for Iraq veterans. Uh, and but one of their rules is like you have to do everything that the, that the VA could po what can possibly do for you. You got to sign up for every program. You got to take every med. You got to do everything. So, so at the, and at this place, they actually keep they keep the meds. Kind of like foster care. They keep them in a thing and you have to go to them to get them so they can sign off that you took them. And they got uh, the open mouth and you swallowed and all that shit? Oh, yeah, all that, all that. Shout and, out to your mom. Because if they found out you're not taking them. Shout out to your mom and I think on they, the swallow joke. <laughs> and I think they also, I think they will blood test you from time to time too. Damn. Like if, you, if they find out you're not on the meds that you're prescribed, it's a real problem. So what they get you on? So, so the VA diagnosed me with depression pt uh depression manifests ptsd or vice versa ptsd manifests as depression and so they started me on wellbutrin which made my heart beat too fast and then mm -hmm. they and then they put me on some other shit um that made me a fucking zombie and then they put me on um, i, I want to say mirtazapine but i think that is what made me a zombie but one of them made me have to fucking randomly shit my pants like 
like explode, not, like not diarrhea, like I could hold it, but it would be like, it would be like, like the sphincter caught that one at the gate, like boop, right before it was coming. Like, and it would just happen random times, you know? And that, I can't do that. Especially yeah. like I'm on, I'm on stage all the time. Yeah. So, and then they put me on. Well, the, why do they, why, how they come up with PTSD for you? Because I have a question about military and all this stuff. I think, I think it's one of those things where they, they, you know, they take your symptoms, obviously, and your years of treatment. And then, and then if you were ever in a combat, mm -hmm. it, they, they pretty much it's automatic it's almost like they're trying to diagnose you with, with I, I guess that's not really true though honestly does anyone there not need anything it's anyone at the va the homeless va <laughs> does anyone they're like no you just you just not catching a break you get you is or is it like something's the matter eat this yeah man it was people there for all manner of reasons i mean some people just had addiction problems um some people were literally like you know they had a uh, traumatic brain injuries, mm -hmm. you know, where their fucking skulls rattled around in their brain. So, so like, some people were literally, you, you know, they weren't the person they were before they left. Yeah. I'm kind of of the mind, and you can, you would absolutely know, war or combat kind of breaks 80% of the people that participate actively. Yeah. I mean, I was never, I was never in any firefights. You know, the, I was in, I was in danger coming this way like they would have these they would shoot these rpgs over the gate at the i'm at the base that people came to the away from the combat you know what i mean i mean yeah. i mean i'm not it's not vacation but, but, it's, but it, it yeah. ain't the front line yeah look i think i think combat is like money it will highlight and multiply what's there you know what i mean yeah it's like if you're if you're a fragile person that's going to get exposed. Right, but I'm saying if you're a strong person and the dude next to you gets shot in the head, I don't know if that's reveals something under I think it's just a natural human reaction to see. You I'm sure you I'm sure they told you guys a lot of guys in combat don't even shoot at the enemy. Yeah, they I I hear that. I mean, I I don't know if you saw but, it, but, but but a lot of that data comes from World War II people and that all drafted. Right. You know what I mean? These but, are real bloodthirsty motherfuckers that that no, enlist. I mean, I mean I, I, look. Also, I think it's different. It's different with it's different with Marines. You were a Marine. I was a Marine. Yeah. Yeah. And it and because because they since Nam because I think one of the stats was like eighty percent of the bullets in Nam hit nothing. Yeah. So since then, well, first of all, now. Now um, the weapons they issue are three were three round bursts. At least when I was in, they weren't fully automatic anymore. So yep. people didn't waste ammo. But I'm sure, like now, they have these processes that weed people out. Like back then, they was rushing people through. They needed people on the front line. You know, boot camp is five weeks and, and shit like that. Yeah. But now, but my, the boot camp I went to was three months long. And the people, when, you know, when you get to the firing range, people, you know, you see people break down crying and shit like that, and. And they just go, they, they, goodbye. They just go. Yeah, so, I, you know, I don't know, because I, I wasn't in combat. I don't have any close friends. Actually, that's not true. I have a couple close friends that were. All right, well, my question for you, it's a broad question, but the, in how did you learn to, like, accept what you're like? Oh, fuck, I don't think I have yet. I think I'm just starting to do that. Like, the medication, the the sort of... Brain noise, the well, the, healthy I got, relationship. I got, I got off a lot of the meds because, you know, like I said, so, you know, the, the, the VA, they diagnosed me with PTSD, manifest as major, major depressive disorder. Yep. And I know the depression shit is there for sure. But so they switched me to, you know, these strong antidepressants and... Uh, I couldn't handle any of the side effects, even though there's, it seemed like a limitless different brands yeah. and stuff. And I, I, I could never handle the side effects. And I think by the time I got on like the seventh one, I, I, I remember, I forget what it did to me, but I was just like, I'm done with all this. And I think I had, ju I had just moved out here, you know, and, and, uh, and Rogan's going, hey man, just like we, we, so what we ended up doing was, was, get, was going to his gym every morning and working out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, I fucking feel great. Like, I don't think I need this shit. So I stopped taking the 
the end of the, and I and I felt pretty fucking good and um, but then what the fuck happened? Oh, I tried Ozempic or or I tried Man- Manjaro, which is mm-hmm. the same thing kind of, and it, it it fucked with my pancreas and that was like getting towards the special type in and all this, and I and I remember talking to the doctor and being like, hey man, I think. Like, I remember just being in one of those modes. I don't know if you deal with depression, but it comes in these. And, and obviously everyone deals with depression, I, but I'm, t- I'm talking about dis- a disorder. Like w- 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 the major depressive disorder is like, it just comes, it just comes in like waves mm-hmm. and some, and you never know when it's going to end. And I, sometimes I can kind of feel it coming the, the, yeah. w- the way, like, you know, Sometimes you know you're gonna have a headache in three hours. Mm-hmm. It's that. Like sometimes I'm like, oh shit, here we go. Um, better masturbate while it works. And I realize, shout out to your mom, <laughs> right? And I realize like I don't, I don't think this shit's working, and I don't know what's gonna work. Like, because I don't even know what it working feels like. That's what I was trying to, you know, that's what I was trying to explain to uh, to the doctor. Was it was like, honestly, I can't tell you if it works because I've done drugs, I've popped pills that make me feel a different way, and and. You know, yeah, this isn't that's the thing about antidepressants. There's not right. like, bah, it's right, like, like it takes huh? months, it takes weeks, it takes weeks. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know if this is effective. And I don't know. I don't think that the upside is better than whatever the fuck is going on now, because I don't know. There's too many things wrong for me to know which thing it is. And I was like, I, I feel like my symptoms don't quite fit that. And then I told the doctor, I was like, well, I did get diagnosed with with ADHD as a kid, but I always just thought it was bullshit. But the more I look into it, the more I feel like maybe I got misdiagnosed with the depression or maybe, or maybe earlier or recently, recently. Like, I so feel, you think it might just be ADD? I think the ADD one was accurate. I think the depression, Interesting. but you wouldn't take the pills. So, motherfucker. Well, so the thing is, I don't know if, <clears throat> I don't know if it's ADD, if it's, if it's depression or if it's both, or if it's one, or if it's like the depression is or the, exacerbates it, exactly right, yeah. right, and so it's that it's trying to figure it out so desperately that I'm will I'm really I was I'm at the point like I'm willing to try anything yeah you know and uh, but you know it's funny as I said that to a close friend of mine I ain't gonna say their name and I was like I'm at I'm I'm at my wits and I'll try anything he was like will you try you know, exercising regularly, eating healthy, and sleeping at a re- real regular time. Now you're time talking crazy. Right. It's like, well, <laughs> damn. So then I started doing that, and and it's not like I'm cured, but I but I do feel like you have to be taking care of yourself in all the other ways that matter. Because you're whatever the fuck is wrong with my mind, I'm never going to cure it. Yeah. There's not an answer. It's just I have to learn how to deal, have to manage To live life. with it, manage it listening to you and like being somebody that I like you and I respect you that it's you're gonna have to it what I'm curious about is what is your is it hard being you are you shitty to yourself or are you like is it pleasant to be you or is it not that pleasant and you're getting through it it's both it's not that pleasant it's chaos it feels chaotic and like you said, I don't derive the same enjoyment from certain things that I think reg- most, most people, people do. do yeah. And so it's also hard to have to pretend. Right. Yeah. It's exhausting. So even so when I'm it's like that's what I think a lot of my f- actual friends don't understand is that like being around you is exhausting for me. Even and that's you that like I'm around because I love you. Yeah. Me being t- me being t- getting tired being around you doesn't isn't reflective of my feelings of you. It's like me willing to put myself through that is is me, me expressing love. But I can't. I'm just exhausted afterwards. And you might hear from me for a couple of days. If it was up to me, it's like I wouldn't. I would be. I would be by myself for a few days and then interact. Yeah, you know. And then and so it's hard to explain that to people. It's hard, especially like we're, one of your blocks is uh, relationship. Oh, well, with women. Yeah, I think. That's a tough one because when I was when I was younger, my problem with relationships is that I was very fragile and very very desperate to be loved because I didn't 
Don't you dare say foster care. Don't you fucking dare. No. Don't you fucking. <laughs> of course. No, no. I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't want to. I think I had just been walking around with that with that question without words to it. You know what I mean? But just that feeling of why doesn't anyone want me? Like what? Like why do I keep ending up in a different house at a different yeah. school with different friends? Why am I? Yeah. You know, and then, it's, it would be hard. It's hard not to take everything personally as a person. Right. Especially that. It's hard to break out of that perspective that like the world, yeah. the world owes me. You know, I didn't do anything to deserve all of this. And I had to get, I really, I mean, the Marine Corps alleviated me of that. Like, what? How? It's like, you ain't special. Because no one gave a fuck. In fact, you know what's so funny? Most of- That's funny, because in the war, before the Marine Corps, it was probably, it seems like everyone is cared for except me. And then you enter the Marine Corps, and it's like, no one's cared for, right. including well, you. The foster kid, kid me felt like I was surrounded by people whose obligations were to keep me alive and take care of me and pre like pretend to be my parents. But their actual sentiment was, you know, they all, they, it's like they all act like you're some, kind of, you're some kind of creature that doesn't know it's ugly, you know? They're like, they're worried. They're worried about you, about things that they want to discuss with you. Mm. Whereas like in, in, in the military me, it, it was more like I'm surrounded by people who have the same obligations to keep me alive and all that, but they don't have to pretend like it's more than that. So, so it's like, Got it. so it's like, they're like, you know, you're, I'm here to keep you alive and you are here to do a job. Yeah. And I'm going to always do my part. I'm going to always make sure you paid, fed, know where to be, what above. It was, you know, it was that consistency that, yeah. Yeah. But, I wouldn't say <sighs> why do most of your relationships end now? Because as an adult, the hardest part for me, especially like in the show business thing, is well, it's it's, it's several problems. My, the problem on my end is that I want closeness so bad, but I don't think I've ever actually been close. Like, I don't want, I don't, I'm, so it's like, I'm not comfortable being close. It's kind of like being alone. It's like, I'm way more comfortable by myself, but I do want you, I do want you to want my company. I want you to invite me and I want you, but I want you to know me well enough to know that I'm not going to go. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, I want to be close and intimate and 100% connected with somebody, but I don't know how to be. And, and the closer I get to it, the more uncomfortable I am. Um, and it's like, and so because I was, like when you're when you're when you're a smart kid that is desperate for love, it's like you don't really attract love. You attract predators, narcissists, mm. and, and people that see you as somebody that, that can easily be taken advantage of. Because all they got to do is, is pretend to love you, and you. And it's like, th and that, that's the thing about I think is what true. kind of predators prey on? No, you? no, I don't mean I don't mean those kind of predators. Oh, okay, I, I but I, but I mean that. I mean, there are people that will use the users. Yeah, there, there are people that you're more likely to be taken. Being sensitive makes you more likely to be taken advantage of. Not, not for people to. Think, you know, it's almost like being generous makes you more likely to get robbed. Yeah, right. It doesn't make you. It doesn't make people. People aren't gonna go. Oh my god! Every time I see Neil, he's giving a hundred dollar bills to the homeless. They're gonna go. This, this motherfucker, motherfucker right here. Yeah, don't know what right, the fuck right, he doing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's that. It's like emo as a youngin, emotionally, I was that person that was so green and just thought anybody that showed me the slightest bit of love, I would just drop all the defenses. You know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. It was, it was. Yeah. It was almost like I had a. I had a. I have a Fort Knox, fucking. 15th black belt level encryption system right here but the but the password is hi right <laughs> yeah the passwords hey cutie yeah yeah so so my prop so then that bleeds into my adult relationships because it's like yeah the, but the, the but the other the other side of that is i think that m most women in america i love a generalization cannot wait they're not socialized or conditioned to like i i require the emotional care that a woman would and women are not tr women american women are not brought mm. up to provide that for men they 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 expect it from you but mm -hmm. i need it too yeah like i'm yeah i'm very soft in here 
and I need and I can't deal with I can't be with a woman that doesn't recognize that and like care for me like extra and and I think the way American women are taught to treat men that they're with like once they get a man it's just not and I'm not and I know everyone isn't like I'm not saying no, all course, women yeah. there are the the sweet souls out there they're usually they're usually married <laughs> at my age right so it's like it's that it's like I always run into that problem where it's like, I need you, like all the way. I need you to carry everything right now. And a lot of times they they can't do that, you know? They don't know how. They've never had to do that. They, uh, yeah, they do it for a kid probably. Yeah, but I think, I, honestly, I think it's something that unlocks in you instinctually when it's your kid. Yeah, no, of course. Right, but yeah. but when it's your man, like men, yeah. men's emotions are not. We're like third class. Exactly, it's it's, it's like nothing. What? No one wants to hear. People will listen to your, uh, you know. That's why the only time anyone wants to, the only time anyone cares how a man feels is when he kills a bunch of people. Then they were like, "Where's his manifesto?" Yeah, but <laughs> but if, as soon as you say it, like you saying it like now, like yeah. And so I I don't <clears throat> I don't know if I can. I don't. I just think statistically, chances are I'm not gonna. Or oh, this is a big one, and maybe I'm doing this in my head. I tend to also go for people that are fucked up mm -hmm. because I always thought subconsciously, I think that they can't judge me for what's wrong with me if I don't judge them for what's wrong with them. Right. But that is a recipe for disaster because, you know, especially I'm 41. If I meet somebody that's, four, if I meet a woman that's 41 that's still fucked up and not doing none of the work, she, she ain't gonna help me at all. No, it's just gonna, gonna get gonna worse. Hurt, we're gonna hurt each other. Yeah. So. It's it's like it's that whole combination of things. But also, I don't know if I want like I think I want to feel, I think I like the way love feels. I do. I like the idea of I like knowing that somebody out there love me like that. But I don't know if I need that. And I and I think so many of my peers, older, younger, whatever, I don't even think it's a generational thing, they see like I forget the dude from the dude from uh, KFC Radio said this to me the other day, but it's like I, I think dudes want to get married and have kids so everyone knows they're not gay. Yeah, like I that, mean that's part of it. It's just, people just right. want to do the thing that culturally that they're supposed to do exactly. and be it's like, like ah, we're like, good. You know what it is to me is like marriage and and deep relationships. It's like this eclipse. It's like all these fucking people you spending thousands of dollars on flights and shit and rushing out here. To, to look at the sky. It was overcast and then yeah, for, for a minute and, and a half it was it looked kind of yeah, dusky. But, but guess what? It's gonna be people po it's people posting on social media right now going, Austin 2024 eclipse. We did we it. We missed out. Yep. And wedding. That's what that's what like relationships was to me. It was like like even like my mother sometimes. I talk whenever I talk to my mother, it's it's it go I guess it goes back to that party thing where it's like I feel like <clears throat> and I hate to generalize women. Maybe I could just say the women in my life. Mm -hmm. The women I've encountered. But again, it's like, I don't think, I don't think women have to understand men. You know what I mean? So it's like, so like every time I talk to women. You mean like they, so therefore they don't make an effort to? I don't think they, no. I don't think, I don't think women ever, I don't think women make an effort to understand men at all. I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they need to. I think they care about our emotions about as much as we care about their sexual ideation what they how they feel about sex and like how um important it is and how and we're just kind of like you trying to fuck or not and they're <laughs> like no but this is an emotional thing that i have a certain expectations right. for and i would like to feel a certain way before it begins and then afterward and after and we're just like no no no, no. and that's how they are with us like we're like we have specific and they're like are you gonna support me or not <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna be there for me or not right, right. i don't give a fuck about all your shit yeah we're i need you to do a thing do it no that's a good analogy um, especially that especially like that every, like every, every time i talk to my mom she go she'll say something to the effect of like you know are you who you who you're seeing who you dating mm -hmm. you know and I, I, it's like i just got out of a relationship in yeah. august but i think she's picky like me or she's particular that's i think that's a better way of putting it and she's older and she's uh, single. Oh, actually, I don't know if she's single. She always got her little secrets. But, you know, she's publicly single. Right. And I think because 
you know, the dream for her was always married, kids, yeah. stable. She thinks that that she wants that for me. Like to how else would Right. But 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 when I tell her that I don't really like what, what, I guess what I'm trying to say is like my 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 mother talks about marriage and relationships as though like the way like like it's somewhere to live. Like, well, you, it is. Well, you can get down. You can get down. You, yeah, you'll get an apartment. I heard. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. I don't want. Somebody I know is down there, so they you could get in touch right. with them when you get when you touch down. And, and I'm like, mom, I'm living in this van. It's great. I don't need an apartment. Yeah. Okay, okay baby. But, but listen, but, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm put in that application for you because it's it's like no, mom, no, really, I'm fine. All right. Well, I gotta take a leak, but here's what I want to say for you. Here's here's my goal for you, and it's a goal that I have only recently realized. Mm -hmm. Accepting who you are, mm. accepting what you're actually like in the dark by yourself. What are you like? What 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 are your goals? What are your dreams? Fuck whether they're the most common dream, whether they're the, the most accepted dream, whether they're the the shared cultural dream, and accepting what yours are, who you are, and feeling good about yourself within that that's my goal for you mm. yeah but that's that's a lofty goal that's why it's a goal motherfucker. do you know anyone that's reached it i just reached it wow yeah peace close close oh. except self-acceptance just self-acceptance like this is what I'm like. It's pretty good. I'm going to I'm going to service this. I'm not going to be like, well, "Yeah, but I'm not going to yeah, but you are I, no." It's pretty good. Huh. And I and I give it to you by putting hands on you. <laughs> okay. Brian Simpson everybody. Brian Simpson. Locks. Uh live at the mothership. On Netflix. On and, Netflix. And of course, who can forget blocks on Netflix and free marks on Netflix and now crazy good on Netflix. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>